you delightful sausage, and I am here to react to something I usually do not do, which is reacting to game news. So, game news is usually something I don't do. I feel that I am more a lore guy, and I play the games actually quite horribly. I suck at all the games, and I more love the stories, I love the hard work that goes into universe crafting, but this is a special exception because it's not just a demonstration of a game update, but what happens when the creators of a game listen to their fans. So this is a leaked trailer for Update 3.0 that isn't supposed to come out until, I imagine, the 21st. So we could wait to watch it in higher quality, but I feel like a breakdown of this is worth our time. So... Let's begin. Actually, you won't be able to hear the audio of it, so I'll be talking throughout all of this. 3.0 is probably the biggest update we've ever made. Mm. It touches almost every aspect of Conan Exiles. Fans should absolutely be excited for 3.0. It is a major patch. It includes... Actually, sorcery. hang on, hang on. There we go. Sorry. Yep, sorcery. Sword and sorcery. This is the other half of the genre. That's what everyone was excited on about. On top of that, we've got updates to the building system. Good. It's going to have a battle pass, uh, perks and attributes revamp. And shop as well, called the Black... Battle pass and perks and attributes revamp, which I really like the idea of. It's a perks and attributes revamp. We know later in this video they're going to be talking about the idea of putting in... Uh, spells versus crafting magic, and I'm hoping that what spells are going to be is going to be a kind of... What spells are going to be is an alternate weapon program. Because there are many different ways one can utilize spells in Conan, and if you can just craft a staff, staffs are used in Age of Conan, um, you or a mystical dagger or ritual dagger of some type, which can be used like a wand, uh, straight out of Harry Potter, but, you know, ritual dagger. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of wands. And, well, I, I don't think wands are non-lore friendly. I think you could easily make wands in Conan. That's not a problem. The The issue is just that... Or not the issue. The, the preference for the ritual dagger is just that that would be a, a much cooler thing. But, yeah, no, uh, if this is what you're doing, I, I like that. If it's a weapon type and that's what we have to do to cast magic, that's fine. Personally, I would prefer, and I hope also, that spells are just a type of thing you can do. Also, we're seeing later that corruption will be Black used Lotus here. Most of them Black Lotus Bazaar. Okay, Age of Sorcery is what the update is going to be called, and I'm so happy about that. Mm -hmm. Sorcery music. Sorcery is absolutely imperative to the world. Of Conan. Yes, it is. When he says genre... sorcery is absolutely imperative to the world. Of Conan. Yes, it is. Era was having its name coined. It literally became half of the name, sword and sorcery. Yes, we've always wanted to add sorcery to the game, and we think it's a part. Look of at the this! Game. Look at this ice bridge. This is beautiful. Okay, so we saw before a scepter. So uh, a little while back, actually, Hosav. The guy who created, uh, the, I give him a, uh, let me just, let me just, let me just, let me just, mm -mm. okay, uh, here we go. So this little scepter here is probably what we're going to be using for magic. Hosov, the creator of the Endgame expanded weapons and armors, I think that's what EWA mod stands for, uh, reached out to me when I still had a Discord, and he was asking me to help write the Conan storyline, specifically the Conan storyline, for his mod, and he was showing me all the updates he wanted to do for his project, and one of the things that he showed me was a magic system very similar to this. And he was waiting on further development because Conan Exiles might have already be coming out with that. And I was one of the few people who really thought this wasn't going to be a thing. I really thought that this was going to be, and I'm, I'm sorry for doubting you, my, my deepest apologies to Funcom for doubting you, I, I, I bow to the master. This is beautiful. This is wonderfully done. I'm very happy that you're introducing this. And other things that I'm very excited for because of how I play this game later in this update. But generally speaking, uh, I'm very happy that they're actually introducing magic. They are doing a form of elementalism. We know elementalism is canon in Conan. That is a form of magic that you would have access to if you studied, for instance, anything in... Um, uh, Kamartage, or you studied in 
uh, amongst the black seers that would also be a way to get elementalism or study the elements or elemental magic that would be most likely of course tomes if one is an independent researcher can be found so I'm liking this so far we're seeing a scepter will most likely be how this is integrated and I am absolutely fine with that it's uh, it looks like and it works in it's one of those things that works in Conan but doesn't work in say another setting like staffs are usually my preference uh, staffs or wands usually but the scepter is an in between the two usually I hate it for the same reason that I would if we were in like telling a civilized vampire story I would hate the the concept of Varney but I love the concept of Varney in Conan because it hits to that you know subject of savagery it hits to that subject of he's, he's a King Kong vampire which I love uh, and this is a mace that can also summon forth. It's a religious icon and mace that can also summon forth magic, which I really like. And this was also Hosob's idea and what he wanted to integrate. So this will complement very well the future mod updates from that. So that'll be great as well. Game. We think it's a part of the game that needs to be the ice bridge. So Howard. what I really like seeing with this ice bridge here. Give, give me the ice bridge. That's no, the ice bridge. We there we go. A... What I really like seeing with this ice bridge here is that it's integrated into the world that is maneuverable and craftable. That is what I like seeing. That is what I like seeing. So I, I know that later they're going to be talking about crafting aspects that will be integrated into magic or doing magic through crafting, but this is good. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is something that if you were a master sorcerer, you would be able to do very simply. And honestly, this is great to me. I mean, I've often talked about how... Conan is not just a caveman fantasy. Now, there is a great universe for that, and I think Gendy Tartofsky's Primal is a great universe for that, at least some parts of it, because it, that, that, that is heavily inspired by that feeling people get from Conan. And if that's what you want to go after, I encourage that universe and exploring that universe. However, right now, we have Conan's Hyborian Age, and the only reason that Conan's Hyborian Age is low fantasy is is that sorcery is rare. The thing about the Exiled Lands is that it's literally a magical prison colony surrounded by magic artifacts with magic and magic. So there's no reason not for more of those fantasy elements to be present within the confines, especially of the Exiled Lands. And the same case goes for Sipta. You're literally sharing land space with the Grey Ones, who are also called the Black Ones. Uh, you're sharing land space with possibly mystic portals opening to the very dream realms of Minar themselves, which is where the Thumha or the Thunha come from. They use both names. And also their god Bakrug is involved. The god Bakrug is actually one of the ones listed on our god series to get through in part three. So I'm really enjoying that as well. Absolutely 100% on board with sorcery. A part of the game that needs to be there to experience Howard's world in full. Yes, experience Howard's world, world in full, yes. A lot of other games are high fantasy games, and they focus a lot on fireballs and things that you can see coming out of your hands. We wanted to find a way to make it feel more kind of physically grounded. All right, so they, they said specifically they want to make it seem more physically grounded. All right, you want to make it seem more physically grounded grounded and so we're seeing this kind of conjuration forth so conjuration in a classical actual study or occult study of sorcery sense could be what they're focusing on here it seems like that that is the direction they're going Sinister and evil it's more about focusing and amplifying sorcerous energy mm -hmm. and as you select different words of power you'll be building different spells all right so different words of power which again that is how conan magic does work we often see that a great example of Conan magic actually does come from the Marvel character Doctor Strange, who will buy the Crimson Rings of Sidak and other such uh, other such enunciations. But yes, words have power in a classical occult sense. So we're going with a words of power feel, and uh, they they very they're very open in this video about how they were inspired by other games coming out, and when we say. Words of power sounds an awful lot like the shout system to me from Skyrim, so I'm very excited about that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. That's mass crafting right there. <laughs> that's, talk about your mass resource gathering. Hell yeah, druidic power. And again, we're still looking at elementalism. So, so far we've seen an earthquake spell and an ice bridge spell, both covered in elementalism. Nothing lore-breaking so far into two different parts there's rituals and spells so rituals and spells they're talking about here the idea now i i have the 
the captions on. So if you're actually bothering to watch the video, you're, you're, you already see all of this. But when it comes to... Okay, so sorcery and spells. Uh, broken up into two different things. Sorceries and spells. Uh, I, I like that concept. I'm hoping that... And it seems like spells are a weapon type. And that you can craft and you can use spells as a weapon type. That's really all I've ever asked for. Um, is given how the game mechanics currently work, where all the different uh, fighting techniques are themselves based around uh, the fighting techniques themselves are based around what weapon you're holding and there is a specific fighting style associated with each one that's fine with me if you're going to go with that style and it's designed to be more cinematic and look and feel that's that's fine with me just do that with sorcery that's what i've always said so i'm fine with that jewels are more kind of the, the crafting <coughs> side of where you perform some kind <coughs> kind of magical or mm. sorcerous ritual at a crafting station at your base. All right, so here we see the summoning of from the tusks. We can tell kind of a demon of Jebel Sog, most likely, given the gods currently in the game. Uh, some kind of magical or sorcerous ritual crafting station at your base. I'm really enjoying that concept. I'm really enjoying a ritual chamber. Uh, the demon portals are actually very reminiscent of another mod for a game, uh, which is actually Dawn of War. For uh, for Warhammer 40k, where they have the demon faction in the Ultimate Apocalypse mod, and one of the the most fun things to do there is like you want to get all your demons out because you want to build your hell gates. It's basically a kaiju factory, and I I do like the idea of having a kaiju or guardian factory. So that is something very gorgeous. Base in order to make something, build something. In your base, you'll build a sacrificial stone. You'll drag an unconscious combatant and put them on the stone, mm -hmm. and there will be a ritual recipe in that crafting station to offer them as a sacrifice. Based. Form a ritual, draw their blood, and then the station will open up again and you can take the item out. Tons of All right, so perform the ritual, take the... And I like that actually. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, wait. And you can take the item out. Station will open up again and you can take the item out. Okay, one more time. Draw their blood. Sacrifice, perform a ritual, draw their blood, and then, and then the station, will open, the station will open up again, and, and you, can take, the you can take the item out. Okay, so this is actually really good, because one aspect of magic not actually covered in Conan before was blood magic, and I was kind of not looking forward to that new addition through Conan Exiles. Again, one thing I've often said about my view in magic in Conan, remember, Conan takes from every mythology on the planet. Generally speaking, if there's a type of occult magic that can be based down into an actual formula, it's probably already canon in Conan. We just haven't seen a Conan villain or character use that type of magic yet. I said before in the King Conan series with the father of the main villainess in that uh, comic series, we actually got the ability to conjure animal spirits as guardians, as physical pets, for the first time in Conan canon. Uh, when it comes to blood magic, that doesn't actually seem to be what's going on here. We actually are getting blood as an aspect of sanctifying an item, which can then be later used in already established sorcery uh, in the universe. So I'm liking that. Tons of different rituals. Necromancy, for instance, allows you to summon the dead. All right, so we get necromancy as one possible ritual. Create undead mounts. Okay, so still necromancy. A couple other rituals we have are integrated into the fast travel system that we're implementing. So we have one that's kind of a set of teleporter pads, and you'll need some blood and some brimstone to fire that. All right, so they're adding fast travel to the game, which is delightful. And one of the ways they're doing that is through magical portals... I, I do like that. Portals portals are canon. Portals are literally how demonologists summon their demons. So that's, yes, that's true. Okay, so nothing... And that's the one thing I'm, I'm kind of... I know I'm being very critical of this, but honestly, so far, you know, this is what people have been wanting from this game. And as again, as we finish the trailer, I know it's a six-minute trailer. I'm taking so long to get through it. But as we finish this game, I think you'll really find that this, this is what happens when a game studio actually listens to its community. Add up. Illusions basically allow you to take weapon or piece of armor and apply a different look. To it. All right, so illusions, or the, sadly, the only representation of mesmerism in the game. Mesmerism is my preferred type of magic in general in fantasy, and mesmerism is its name in 
uh, Conan. Sadly, the only representation of that will be an outfit or vanity system, which I'm absolutely excited for. I actually just got in to start using that in Age of Conan, so I'm very happy about that being used here. I absolutely love that. That is easily one of the things that I can imagine most people who actually play the game, you know, actually play, play the game, hate about the the game, which is that if you get a weapon that's incredibly, weapon or clothes that are incredibly ugly, but with higher stats, you have to put that on instead of your current armor. And it's just like, oh, this feels awful. That problem is now solved, and I appreciate it deeply. So if you're able to craft two different pieces... Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at the druidic branch armor. And you like the look I of like one, it. but the stats of another, very pictish. you can apply the look of one Very Darfari, very other. pictish. So it allows players to look how they want without sacrificing the, uh, the stats. That's great. That's great. That's wonderful. I love his Mitra shirt here, by the way. That's great. The Vikings are surrounding it. They want to have with their equipment. Perks and attributes. So what we just went over here was sorcery, the sorcery aspect of the video. Is there anything more to go over here? I don't think so. I think that this is greatly well integrated. I think that we can probably expect ritual magic for each of the gods, complementing each of the gods. So we saw ice magic, which obviously would be great for a Ymir follower. We saw earthquake magic, which would be great for a follower of Jebel Sog, or, we, or rather we saw the summoning of a baboon, a tusked baboon creature, a demon of Jebel Sog, most likely, which would be, again, great for a Jebel Sog guy. Uh, and then I think the last sorcery thing we saw was uh, still very druidic. No, portals. Portals would be good for anyone who genuinely just wants to be a sorcerer in general. So that would be great. A lot of these ritual magics seem to complement the... And spells seem to complement the... Uh, do, 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 seem to complement the gods in the game... Uh, and then when it comes to the spells themselves and the new building pieces, they should complement actually building a fairly powerful wizard's tower. I deeply appreciate that. We've also wanted to go through and address all the perks that we felt were sort of underperforming and sort of give them a... Andrew Riker. Thank you, Andrew Riker. Facelift. Essentially, we've blown up the entire system and made a new meta. We have some great surprises, and we were really changing the way that Conan Exiles play. Oh, okay. Unspent points. Oh, unspent points 55. So I actually want to go back here. Because honestly, the the way this game plays a is a big meta. part of why I just don't great literally play it. Okay. We were really changing the way that Conan right, so that's still five per points to get to... It seems like a lot less to master. Corruption is a core That's part great. of sorcery, so we wanted that to also impact the attribute system. When your character is exposed mm -hmm. to corruption, it'll corrupt their form and their their whole physical being. Oh, okay, great. So when we're exposed to corruption, we basically get Sith corruption. That's great. That's wonderful. With that power, you can corrupt your physical self mm -hmm. in order to gain access to special perks. Yes. Once you've reached a certain... Okay, so we can, we can use... Oh, this is going to be good. Okay, I'm going to wait for him to finish. Corruption threshold, your character will be able to corrupt their strength, their vitality, or their charisma into improving themselves. These benefits won't show themselves very powerful at first, but as you devote yourself more to the void, they'll start... Okay, so we have an optional... <clears throat> this is great. This is one of the core themes of Conan. Uh, and that's that sorcery and magic is dangerous and scary. I think the best comment I ever got on my guide to magic in Conan was that the, the, someone said, thanks, now I'm afraid to cast magic. Yes, exactly, you should be. And this will allow corruption to be integrated into the magic system, which is another great thing that people wanted. And when you think about all the ways this could have gone wrong, I'm deeply appreciative of it. Showing up and making you more and more powerful. New building system, all right. When we first started working on the game, we implemented the building system in a particular way. But mm -hmm. since then, a lot more survival games have come out that have made us realize, hey, we can do a little bit better. So, okay, so this is where they sort of admit that, like, obviously there, there are aspects of Ark, there are aspects of Minecraft, there are aspects of maybe Valheim, I hope Valheim, because Valheim is a very good game, uh, that they can take from. And I, I deeply appreciate that. Truthfully, I think the old building system. Nicole Rasner. Thank you, Nicole Rasner. A little difficult to use with the gamepad. However, with this new system, it's designed to be used with the gamepad, and I think it's going to be so much easier for people. It takes all the crafting recipes, all the building items. My only problem with the controller is just that, you know, I my, my computer just for some reason doesn't want it to stay connected for more than 10 minutes, and, and it's just annoying. 
you've unlocked and puts them all in one menu. You can go to the section you want, find the piece you want, and it's a lot simpler. Aha, and so here's the thing I'm most excited about from a player perspective. This will increase my hours spent in-game dramatically. They have released Creative Mode. Oh baby, oh yes. The creative mode is incredible. You get this admin panel, it unlocks all the building pieces, and you can create your perfect home or castle or fortress. A fundamental change in how you can build in the game. It'll be mm -hmm. really, really easy, I think, for people to, to build. Yeah, but before I was doing this anyway, but I was using the admin panel a bunch, and this will be great. Home. Battle pass and in-game store. So yeah, no, that's the only thing I'm, I really am excited about when it comes to this is the creative mode and possibly making the game actually viable for someone like me to play who is more casual, who does suck uh, dramatically at playing games. And uh, this this might be, that may be a very fun chance for a story-focused, more cinematic playthrough of the game, which I really like. I mean, I have to create the own, my own story, of course, but this this is what I'm into, and I can obviously use EWA mod for that, so Hosav comes into play as well. Some building pieces are part of the battle pass, and others are going to be in the shop in the battle pass. Hmm. And this is this is the only this is the only part that really. Hmm. Part of the battle pass. Some building pieces are part of the battle pass, and others. Others are going to be. Be in the shop. In, in the, the shop. Okay. Pass. We have sorcery themed building pieces, which are built to complement and supplement the existing base building sets. The main reason we're doing the Battle Pass is so that we can continue to release free features. I'm a strong believer that monetization should be more on the cosmetic side, changing the way you look necessarily, and not changing the power of things. And I, I okay, so this man, I do not know his name, but uh, did they show his name? They do not show his name. They show his name over here. I'll look for if they show his name over here. Um, but what what I would say in response to what he just said, which is that, you know, <clears throat> that monetization should be cosmetic. I think that's a beautiful and good thing if you're making primarily an action game. But in the case of Conan, it is a canvas by which many people want to create their ideal life. And it feels very... Ah, it, it feels very daunting, or it feels like they're taunting you with like, hey, you put so many hours into the game and all these crafting rabbit holes, but you still can't build in the Argosian or Aquilonian styles unless you are, uh, to, 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 to do, unless you are, you know, buying these other things. And it's just like, I mean, look, at the end of the day, I have all the DLCs for this game, and what that means is that over the course of four years, I have spent $100 on this game, and that is extremely expensive for the budget that I allow myself to put into my entertainment. Uh, I am very responsible with my money, but I make an exception for this specific game, So, uh, and anything with the, the Conan sort of title on it. You know, I mean, we're talking about... it's That's... Ah, uh, but... When it comes to this, it's it's yes, that would be a great design philosophy, and I can understand where he's coming from as 100%. I do understand that mentality. It's ah, it's just that in this specific instance that that isn't really applicable because of crafting being half of the game. But if this is kind of what they what they want to do, and the, the, ah, I, I don't have much to say on that. Obviously, I, I just wish that the money we already put into the game would actually matter, you know? Like, it's it's just one of those things where it's... It's just a very... It, Conan Exiles has done nothing to be a more accessible or less expensive game. It's done everything to try to... It should try, at least, to live up to the price tag that it has. Which, currently, if you want everything that Conan Exiles has to offer, let's go to Steam. Let's go to Steam and let's look at the pricing for Conan Exiles. Conan. Conan Exiles. Uh, so Conan Exiles Complete Edition. So this is if you want everything that Conan Exiles have. Has currently, you would have to pay... You, you would have to pay $150. You would have to pay... That is more than I have spent on this game over the course of... 
over the course of this time period. And that's very sad. Uh, that's very sad for any game to be $150 and have as many glitches, have as many problems as Conan Exiles. <clears throat> and the only reason it survives is really that Conan brand name. People who are hardcore fans of Howard's universe and don't know that this game exists, Age of Conan, which, honestly, it's still expensive. It's still, like, to have one character... And it's made... It's the same same publisher, same people, uh, Funcom. But it's still expensive because you still have to pay $60 to get the full content for one character slot, by the way. You don't get more than one character slot for this MMO unless you subscribe, unless you do the $15 a month thing. But $60 will get you basically the full game, and I, uh, it'll get you the Hyborian Conqueror Collection, which is the full game. And that is, uh, oof, that, is <laughs> that is still a problem when... I, I, this is definitely still... If you want to uh, explore Howard's universe, Age of Conan over Conan Exiles... But that doesn't mean Conan Exiles can't get better. And that doesn't mean that Conan Exiles can't develop its own growth. I think that it's great that Conan Age of Conan already offers a vanity system. Age of Conan already exists within the realm of a vanity system. It, it literally has two tabs for your character, which is that you have one tab, with which is your stat items, and then one tab, which is how you want your character to look, which is wonderful. If you have an item that is comparable in terms of, like, your character can only wear light armor, and you found a, p a piece of light armor that sucks in stats, but is far superior. If you found a piece of light armor that sucks in stats, but is far superior in terms of aesthetics, you can just put that on it, it, anything you... Oh, no, 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 that's titties. All right. But you can just put that on anything you want, and that that alters the fundamental aesthetic of your character, which is great, which is phenomenal. Uh, when it comes to the pricing, it's just something that's very demoralizing for a lot of people uh, because I, one looks at a hundred and fifty dollar price tag and one doesn't see, aha, you know, uh, people cheating building a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Funcom admins, people cheating, building a castle and a blo and blocking a rock, <laughs> which is great. So, so there are also that's that's another aspect to talk about. The pricing is kind of an issue. No, it is an issue, and the other side of it is that you have multiple communities in Age of Conan, or rather, not Age of Conan, but in actually both in Age of Conan and Conan Exiles, you have people like me who are probably going to spend hundreds of hours in the creative mode. You have other people who are dedicated PvP people, obsessive PvP people. Yeah. Um, and I, I, this is my review. The, I wrote a very angry review, but my idea of this game was tainted by uh, a bad PC. So for now, I'll say... Uh, yeah, so I will say this. After, uh, after my experience in 3.0, however 3.0 changes the game, I will be going here... And I will be changing my review yet again. So I will edit my review one last time. And that will be my full review. So uh, this is uh, uh, 24.7 hours played at the time review. Uh, in comparison, this is 98 hours, uh, nearing 100 hours on, uh, on time, uh, play time. So that, that'll, be, that'll be a fun change. So let's, let's continue with the last part of this. The way you look necessarily, not changing the power of things. So the battle pass, you're going to get some really cool. And things. again, so that that view of not changing the power of things, but changing the way you look, that makes sense. That's MMO logic, uh, basically for PvP players. It keeps it fair. If I was a PvP focused player, I could understand why this would be a good thing. New armors, weapons, mounts. Really cool things. New armors, weapons, mounts. That are all built around the sorcery theme. They're all right. That, that's fair because that's stuff that mods could add in and be kind of better at. So you have the option of using mods instead, any new mods that come out for this game. I have to imagine as sorcery is added, new mods will be coming out. Ways to progress through the battle pass. And the first is to play the game. Every day you'll be given a series of challenges. And when you complete one of those challenges, you claim the experience from it. 
and then that challenge is replaced with another one. If you don't want to play to unlock everything in the battle pass. Also, just let me clarify something and let me make myself look like an idiot on the on video. Uh, battle pass uh, definition. Video game industry, battle pass is a type of monetization approach that it adds additional content for a game, usually through a tiered system. Okay. A battle Pass provides content in the game usually through a tiered system, rewarding the player with in-game items for playing the game and completing specific challenges. Inspired by the Season Pass ticketing system and original Dota 2 2013, the Battle Pass model gained more use as an alternative to subscription fees and loot boxes. Oh. 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 Battle Passes tend to offer free passes which are available to all users, and a premium pass, which was... Okay, that's great. Okay, okay, that's that's fine. That's fine. That Passes tend to offer free passes to all your... Okay, so we'll get free battle passes, and then in addition to that, there will be a paid option. Fair enough. You can also purchase levels in increments of 1, 5, and 15. So for those of you who have less time, that option is there as well. So we won't I, I won't be doing... That. And also this, this. Like DLCs like we did in the past with the Yeah, we won't have cosmetic DLCs, which is great. So I understand where they're coming from with the cosmetic DLCs. I, I understand that for someone like me who just loves art, who just loves having a canvas that I can transform uh, and loves architecture, this is going to be a different... Uh, uh, yeah, it's no more culture packs, no more $10. I, I appreciate that very much. Um, and instead what they're just going to have are, you know, uh, battle passes and, and ages instead, we are battle passes and ages instead. So they will have, I'm hoping, uh, was it, we're going to have multiple sorcerer themed, themed armors and clothing, clothing options. Some of them will mm -hmm. be in game and some of them will be in game and craftable. craftable. Others will be offered as part of the battle pass or B part of the battle pass or, or as part of the shop. We're also shop. Okay. So you can still. Uh, it's still, it offers the option of microtransactions. Adding an, an item store to the game, and this will allow players to have more of an a la carte option for what they want to buy. All right, so I'm not excited, obviously, about an in-game store option. I mean, this this is a game that, I mean, literally, you're, you're spending $150 on, and it's, if you want the full thing, if you want the full, oh, now I'm even more confused. Browse all top. So, generally speaking, the bundle for the complete edition. 300 plus hours. Funcom's Cash Cow. Uh, Funcom's Cash Cow. Really, uh, uh, it's all about the mods and even with the... Okay, so there's there's a lot of negative reviews currently. Pull up a chair and listen to the tale of sadness and woe. My group of... <laughs> yeah. So, gen genuinely, it's still... Uh, I I really wish this game did not cost one hundred and fifty dollars because you know you'd really want to get new people into it. Uh, at least Age of Conan, if you are okay with being cut off to the Katai race and being cut off from all of Eastern Hyboria, uh, is is free to play. And to be quite honest with you, there aren't much changes between free to play and the changes that come with a $60, $60 upgrade uh, because they still don't give you multiple character slots after you paid them $60, which that uh, feels like a middle finger, but eh. It's been a long time coming, making sorcery. <laughs> with each new release. I like this. This is the avatar of Bokrug right here. Exiles, we're trying to make the kind of game that we feel like our players want to play and that we want to play. So if you want to see more of this, definitely follow our Conan Exiles Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of that. Thank you all for all of your support and for playing our game and enjoying it. And I hope all of you have a great time exploring the world and finding the things to do those dark evil rituals and become the twisted sorcerer on top of tower. I will become a twisted sorcerer on top of tower. I arguably already am. All right. Uh, and seems to be it. I saw a little brief glimpse of a... What was this? A little brief glimpse of a gliding pet here. A gliding mount, which is cool. Big snake, baboon demon, 
Corruption Storm, Age of Sorcery. All right, Age of Sorcery, give me your thoughts below. I think this is a great update. Um, not excited about the, the cash op store thing, but honestly, 80% of what was in this is just phenomenal. That's great. That's wonderful. Um, I, I, think that, uh, I think that that is something that we can all get behind. I absolutely 100% promote it. I think that's phenomenal. Uh, that is all. I this is the only time I'm ever gonna do game stuff. Uh, just the, this is the only game update. I think it's a good moment to mark for Funcom because it shows that they listened to their audience. Um, uh, for, still trying to attain maximum maximum pay pig, maximum revenue, uh, maximum cash cow from the game. Uh, they they want the pay pigs. Um, but when it comes right down to it. I mean, they are improving the game. And if you already own everything the game has to offer in terms of DLC, this is a win. I'm not sure this will be the thing that gets new players in. I hope that it is. I hope that it's the thing that gets new players in. Oh, Urban, Res Urban Rescue Ranch. I don't know if any of you keep up with this channel. He lives He lives near me. He lives in the same state as me. He it's he's the he is the babies. He has the baby he is hit rapper and artist the baby who is a kangaroo, who is his kangaroo, who he talks about, who I like. Anyway, I'm getting off subject, so it's time to end the video. Thank you all for watching. I'm excited for update 3.0. It's that's your, my takeaway. It's it's a good update. I like the idea of it, and I appreciate that you watched me watching it, watching me, watching you, watching me watching you thanks for the people who like and subscribe and donate and comment on the videos and to me and i appreciate you and thank you have a good day